The passing of John Dingell has brought accolades from our living presidents, members of Congress, such a long list of who's who. Some have referred to him as the last gentleman in politics. He elicited something very rare in those who were around him, and that was a fierce loyalty. Mara McDonald, live in Dearborn tonight. Uh, many in politics in our state, Mara, trace their beginnings in politics to John Dingell. They do, and Devin, they'll tell you that they owe him everything, and it's very interesting. I've been covering politics a long time in this state, and Dingell is the only one where if you talk to his former staffers, they will say to a T, and they mean it, I love that man. This might give you a reason why. Take a look. Dingell, during his years as the chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, was respected but also feared. He was tough as hell, but when he was tough as hell, it was for for a purpose. He was fighting for people. But his staffers, and there is a legion of them, will tell you he was also gentle, courtly, and kind. And his orders when it came to helping the people in his district were very clear. I was not to let some spineless government bureaucrat stand between him and the people who elected him. His two rules? We will cook our politics to match the facts. We won't cook the facts to match the politics. The second was to remember who and how you got there. You always wanted to please him, and not because you were afraid of getting screamed at, but because you didn't want to disappoint him. One of the very first days I was working for him, I had a simple task of just picking him up at the airport. Jason had never been to Metro. He didn't know there were two terminals, so you can imagine how it went when he arrived at the wrong terminal. It took a while to straighten out, so when he finally rolled up, at the right spot. I am going to be fired. This is my last day working for him after a week. And so I finally get to the right terminal. He gets in the car and he wasn't happy, of course. Uh, and he said, beloved friend, I hope you've learned where to pick me up from the damn airport. <laughs> Back here live, I don't know about you and the last time you messed up at work, but I certainly have never been referred to as beloved friend. Uh, Jason says that if everything was okay, you were dear friend, but if you'd done something that wasn't great, you were then addressed as beloved friend. We are live in Dearborn tonight. I'm Mar McDonald, Karen and Devin. Back to you. Killing me softly with this song. It was classic John <laughs> Dingle to dress you down, beloved friend. Yeah, great stuff, Mara. Now, John Dingle's family announced funeral arrangements this afternoon. They'll be held on Monday. First off will be the visitation. That'll be at the Ford Performing Arts Center in Dearborn. And then the funeral mass will be held Tuesday. That'll be 11 a.m. at the Church of Divine Child. The public is welcome to attend. That's also in Dearborn. The House of Representatives, by the way, has canceled votes that day so that members of Congress can travel here to attend the service. Then everything moves to Washington, and on Thursday, a funeral mass will be held in the nation's capital before his interment, which will be at Arlington National Cemetery. Local 4 will be carrying John Dingle's funeral in Dearborn live on air and on clickondetroit.com. Our coverage will begin Tuesday morning.